Hello everybody, welcome back to the I'm All Abroad YouTube channel. If it is your first time here, please help a little channel grow a little bit bigger by simply clicking on the subscribe button and the notification tab. It doesn't cost you anything to do that, but it does help a little channel out big time. Now there's two different versions of this video. There's a standard version or a 360 degree version. If you're watching in 360 degrees for the best in viewing enjoyment, go to the bottom of your video into the settings and pick the highest resolution possible. It should be about 4K. And if you would like to see the other version of the video, then click on the link that is magically appearing somewhere above my head, even as we speak. Today's drive is going to be from the Crown Casino in Burswood, past the magnificent Opta Stadium. And then we're gonna go onto the freeway to our only underground, well, tunnel, road tunnel. That's what we're gonna to do today. And then if the video keeps going, cause I've filmed a few today, if we've still got battery life, we'll continue around through into the CBD area. So enough of me talking, let's get in the car and get this underway. Okay, so although you can't see it, just due to there being trees and obstacles in the way, where that blue fence is, that's an outdoor cinema. We have quite a few outdoor cinemas in Perth which is very good for the summer months. I'll, in fact, do a little detour right at the beginning of this video to show you. You should be able to see the cinema screen there now. As we zigzag around the car park. Very busy down here at the car park today. I don't know why it just is. And I don't know why that car is not parked in a car park. B, in a car park B. So if you're watching on 360 degrees to the left hand side, there you'll see the big cinema screen. There is nothing like watching a outdoor movie at night time in the heart of summer in Perth. And straight ahead, or as we turn to the left, the building you are going to see is gonna be part of the Burswood Crown Casino complex right there that's a hotel well that's one of the hotels well two of the hotels one behind the other the first hotel near us here depending on what angle you look at it it's designed to look like a boat if you're watching in 360 degrees if you turn the camera to that hotel and uh, and keep looking at it you will see it look like a boat in about five Four, three, two, one. There you go, see it looks like a cruise ship. Madagara Bridge on the left hand side. You can do bridge climbs on that now and zip lines. We might do that in the future once we're in a financial situation to do so. We will be in a financial situation to do so if you watch the videos on this channel a lot and then Google will love me and they'll give me money for the adverts and then we can pay to do stuff because at the moment I make very little from YouTube but I do it for you I do it for the love as we drive towards the magnificent Optus Stadium you've seen it many times on my channel the biggest optic fiber lighting display in the world because the whole building is covered in optic fiber it has been voted the world's best stadium and i know cities melbourne for example they go we're voted the best city in the world the most livable city in the world well it depends on what poll you listen to and who does it and you know where that poll comes from it's open to interpretations whereas optus stadium has actually been voted the world's best stadium mainly because it's one of the world's most newest stadiums, so the technology in there is the newest it can be. And all of this land you're seeing, including these multi-million dollar apartments in front of us, the casino, the stadium, all of this was built on a rubbish tip. Or if you're in, if you're in America, a garbage tip.
as we curve around again to see off the stadium again. Optus is the naming rights, of course. That's a phone company over here. Not a very good phone company. It was originally called Perth Stadium, and the Premier of the time said, it will never change its name. It will always be known as Perth Stadium. We're not gonna sell out to companies to put their name on this building. Perth Stadium is what it'll be called. And as soon as he said that, Optus said, we'll give you millions of dollars. And it was like, okay, we'll change your name. As we drive past to the left, Stadium Station, only open on event days. And I think, uh, I think Saturday, Sundays now might be open, Stadium Station. I've physically not seen in there at all. As we head onto the freeway to go into the, uh, the one and only tunnel. Train line will stay on the left-hand side of us until we get to the tunnel. Now Perth is the only place in Australia that doesn't have toll roads. It was decided years ago and the government um, made policy in that of it that you know roads are paid for with your vehicle license fees and you know, private companies shouldn't own roads. So the tunnel we're going in, there's, there's no tolls. Which is slightly complicated when you are a, um, when you live in another state of Australia or no, when you live here and then you go to another state of Australia, like I did, and then you start driving through all their tunnels over east, or freeway systems, and you don't even think that you need a toll to go on these roads. Because we're not used to it here. You'll see some trains on the 360 degree camera on the left hand side. Now that's the stabling yard of Claysbrook. Claysbrook. And on the right hand side, which you may see in the 360 degree camera just, that's where the Indian Pacific train leaves from when the Indian Pacific runs, when we're not in a pandemic. Again, left hand side uh, in the 360 degrees, you see the electric trains there in the Claysbrook station yard, station yard. As we come up to the tunnel, it's called Polly's Pipe. That's a nickname. It's actually the Graham Farmer Freeway. And we need to be in that left lane, but Mr. Four Wheel Drive has to let us get in there. Thank you, Mr. Four Wheel Drive. Now, Desover cameras might be playing up just due to the whole lighting situation in here. Nothing much I can do about it. Like all tunnels, it gets dark in the middle and then as you get closer to the end, they, they have more lighting on to adjust your eyes back to normality. I think this tunnel is like 1.6 kilometers in length, 1.7 around that length. So not the longest tunnel known to man but it is the only tunnel in Perth. Going underneath the Northbridge area, Northbridge is pretty much next to the uh, CBD area. So we're kind of going under part of the CBD-ish. We shall exit. I can't remember where we are exiting to. We're just going to exit. Let's let's go this way. Let's go through Northbridge now. We've been through the tunnel under Northbridge. Let's go through Northbridge to give you an idea of uh, the time saving by going through the tunnel. Because Northbridge is quite uh, quite congested in places. Perth Arena on the right hand side. So 
So we're pretty much following the tunnel now. The tunnel will be underneath the buildings on the left hand side. Uh, you saw the amount of traffic in the tunnel and that amount of traffic used to be on this road. So you could see how it wouldn't have worked in the year 2021 to have that sort of thing. This is the heart of Northbridge. This is where all the crime happens. If you uh, if you know anything about Perth, you know every every night there's bashings and stabbings and murders here. From here, I'll show you how long the dangerous area is. From here where we are now, until 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 down here just a little bit more. So not the longest stretch, and the police here are just so bad that they can't manage such a small area. And right up to where pretty much this white car in front of us is, there, that's, that's the whole length of North Bridge and the troubled area. Um, and it's a, it's a daily thing here. There, there's not a day that goes by where this stretch of road is not on the news for uh, bashings, attacks, robberies, assaults, uh, murders. You honestly can't tell me that such a small stretch of road can't be monitored and maintained by police. But if you look around, there's no police here. There's none, absolutely none. They always arrive after the incident. So when I used to do Airbnb, prior to YouTube and prior to the pandemic, um, I used to have a lot of tourists from around the world come here and to stay with me. And I always used to say to them, never go to Northridge, just don't do it. Never, ever go to Northridge. It just ain't worth it. I think you're seeing the issue here with why they needed a tunnel. But you can see you like part of the problem here in Northridge now to the left hand side, homeless people laying on the footpath and note the homeless person has like they're not struggling. They're not like homeless people in Japan that are living in a cardboard box. He has his mobile phone in his hand that he's playing with at the moment, uh, his Coca-Cola, his cigarettes. Um, we have a very soft approach here to what real homeless is. I, I am for supporting real homeless people, um, but here uh, they get a pocket full of government money and they take no responsibility in their life. Uh, they can afford to buy the latest iPhone and, you know, $50 pack of cigarettes, but they can't manage to go find a place to, to live in. So because of that, I don't class them as real homeless. Real homeless have nothing. Come on, traffic lights. I don't like driving through here with cameras on the outside of the car. Come on, come on, come on. It's a green light. Go, 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 Gadget. Go. 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 Don't stop. Go. 
Chinese New Year straight ahead. Well, there you go. Never knew that was on. Um, I think you saw from the uh, turning around the 360 degree camera that um, there were some antisocial people on that stretch of road. Once we leave that stretch of road and we're here, we're kind of fine. It is literally that stretch of road. Now the bridge we're about to go on is called the Horseshoe Bridge because it is shaped like a horseshoe and it was designed for trams. We used to have trams here and this was the only way the tram could get across the train line. Perth train station on the left hand side, that uh, ceiling, roof, whatever you want to call it. And Yagan Square on the right hand side, you would have seen that in previous videos on the channel before when we went to the Christmas uh, fair, the Christmas Wonderland, remember? That was there on the right hand side. So that was a horseshoe bridge. Might as well turn here. Go past Perth train station, giving way to Mr. Bus. Another place you don't want to really be hanging around at the front of Perth train station, lots of trouble here as well with undesirable characters. All right, I'll go around you, Mr. Bus. Oh, there's buses everywhere. It's a traffic jam of buses. Train on the left. The building in front of us that's going to be on both sides of the road in a minute is Royal Perth Hospital, one of the biggest hospitals in Western Australia. They've tried to close it down many times. The government don't want it here. It's prime land, prime real estate. But uh, they haven't succeeded to get rid of it yet. And for no reason at all, we'll randomly turn left here so that we sort of do a, a loop of uh, where we've been. We're going to try to get back onto the freeway we were on before. We've certainly passed the tunnel now, so we won't be going through the tunnel again. We have quite a few motorbike gangs in Western Australia. I don't know if your cities uh, around the world have motorbike gangs in them. We certainly have them here. Um, they can cause havoc. Usually if you're not in a motorbike gang, they kind of leave you alone. If you are in a motorbike gang though, they, they riot between one another and um, it can be quite mm, dangerous. As I say, motorbike gangs basically just um, are a danger to other motorbike gangs, to general public there. They're quite nice. Uh, some motorbike gangs do some very good stuff. Uh, we have a children's hospital here, and once a year, one, one of the motorbike gangs go out and collect teddy bears and toys 
you to be convoy of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of motorbikes. And here we are, we're, we're back on this freeway again. So to the right hand side is Claysbrook, that's where I said the, uh, the trains were before. As they still are, they haven't moved in that small period of time, they haven't said, ah, quick, let's move it before the I'm All Abroad YouTube channel comes back again. You can see, again, I mean, uh, on the left-hand side there, that is where the India Pacific leaves from. You get a better view of it now in the 360-degree camera. Um, you see how confusing the road system is here. We kind of like went to join the freeway, but now we're not. And now we're on another off-ramp to go on another on-ramp to go back onto the freeway again. It's a sticky tape approach here. Rather than building something or if they change that you know if they they change or go and add something a lot of places will knock down that whole section and rework it all where here they just add things on and because of it you don't get that uh you know the free flowing thing to the right hand side there you can see optus stadium again if you're watching in 360 We'll go in the right-hand lane while we can. Left-hand side, Belmont Park race course. Don't even know if they use it anymore. I think they do. This is Orong Road now. I'm now heading home. I filmed several videos today. I think that is plenty for today. So instead of uh, curving back into Optus Stadium like where we started and the casino, which is next to Optus Stadium, we're gonna literally stay on this road now as I head back towards my area. Been a bit risky filming today, all the videos I have, because I have no lens protectors on the 360 degree camera. The lens, uh, the, the lens protectors I had were scratched, but you also get a weird video quality out of, uh, out of the lenses. So risking it without the lens protectors may be silly, but yeah. I don't know if the lens protectors only help if the camera falls off. Um, I, I don't know how easy it is to scratch the lenses in what I'm saying, you know, while it's sitting on the car nice and strong and the wind's just going by, is the wind gonna scratch the glass? I don't know, I'll soon find out. So you can see this road's turned from a freeway into just a highway. So there's all traffic lights and everything now. As it's a Sunday when I'm filming this, it's not too bad. Not, no real congestion. But if you can picture what this road's like during the weekdays, it is so bad. Bumper to bumper traffic. It is a nightmare. It's one of those roads, don't worry about indicating mate, she'll be right. Um, it's one of these roads where it should really be turned into a freeway. The other side of the city has loads of freeways. Well, when I say loads, I mean like 
through the heart of the metro area, like a logical freeway. On this side, we don't really have any. It's it's just um, just mainly highways. Oh, they found their indicator. Good on your son. Kind of on the border of suburbs here, so I can't really tell you what suburb we're going through at the moment. Uh, it, it changes too quickly here. The kind of areas that we're passing though are, um, are Belmont, Vic Park, Carlisle. Belmont to the left hand side there if you if you turn down uh, that road there that'll take you to Belmont you would have seen Belmont in the bus video we did the driving video for the bus we went through Belmont as I start to pack up in the car while we're at the stoplight that'll take forever to change start to pack up my uh, camera equipment ready to remove it from uh, the automobile when I get home, have a cup of coffee, enjoy the air conditioning on a very hot day. I think it's 37, 38 degrees today. Humidity of a billion percent. I done good today with my filming. I think I've made a month's worth of uh, of content. Woohoo! But knowing me, I get a bit antsy, and I can't wait to release it and show you all. So the month might turn out to be a week. Depends on how many of you watch it. The more people that watch it, the more I am likely to do more. I can tell you now we are definitely in a suburb proper. We are now in Kewdale. One of the areas that I went to school in, Kewdale. As a school child, we called it Spewdale. I'm not quite sure why we called it Spewdale, but what a lovely nickname it was. Where do you go to school? Go to school, I go to Spewdale. Spewdale Senior High School. And the, uh, the bridge that we're coming up to, that we're gonna go under, that is Leach Highway. That's the bridge, well, that's the road you go to the airport, airport to the left-hand side. Again, we've covered that in, uh, in the bus video, the 380 bus. Go check it out. Go check out all my videos. If you're new here, subscribe. Click on notifications, another car that doesn't indicate. Wherever you are in this big, wide, wonderful world of ours, have a great morning, afternoon, evening, or night. Thank you for joining us. Hope to see you again at the I'm All Abroad YouTube 